Morning guys, Mark Farashi, ProTech Dog Training. After the snowstorm we got last night, we should get some more in maybe. There's enough clouds out there that it could get pushed on in later this afternoon and get us another little flurry. Who knows, I have to check the weather report. Um, Want to do a little yak this, this screen session since I'm not going to go out and work dogs this morning. Just kind of bear with the, the slosh and the mud and everything else that's due to come with this snow. It always gets kind of ugly to, after the first couple days after the snowstorm dig our way out and get out of here it's not that big a little bit of snow on the ground it's not that big a deal but it still creates kind of a sloshy mess so um going back and, and watching some of the videos i did when i first started breed, breeding these dutch shepherds and talking about i didn't want anybody that were laymen to get these dogs and how that they required somebody that has a very good sense of dog psychology and and understanding what they're getting into the next, the first litter, I, I almost got stuck with every dog. The next litter, I went ahead and decided that I would do interviews and then talk to people and then kind of qualify them to see if they, you know, if I felt that they were able to handle what they were getting into. And I did that. And so now I'm looking at it. Most all my customers have been staying in touch. If you haven't been staying in touch and you're having any problems, you know you have me as a resource. Go ahead and reach out. I'll be more than happy to help you out, spend time with you. It's all about me trying to give you as much support as I can with a dog that's a little higher uh, criteria in your skill level, okay? Um, so then I've got two of my customers. I got the one return with Aurora based on supposedly a, a heart murmur, which uh, I think was a low-grade, normal. They, they get them all the time as puppies. It's real common, guys. They grow out of them. So uh, she returned the dog, but really, I think it was more about behavior and her inability to handle it. And I've said that it was because she was up in this cabin and all that. Well, she recently re reached out back my way and told me there was a lot of people around. There was things that she had done. She was trying to work on it. So it gets back to my whole premise. These are not easy dogs, okay? They're not for the layman. They're for people that really understand dog psychology. And, and this young lady had uh, experience with horses and assured me she could handle it and and so uh, it was the case exactly like I predicted, that here was a person that tried but didn't have the ability to read the animal. It's not just getting people around the dogs, guys. It's understanding how to read the animal, understand what the fear is there, and then how, how to handle that in the right way, not putting too much pressure on them. When they go through this really young development stage where these diet dogs are so tightly wired, okay, um, they go through development periods that a lot of people don't know how to handle. And I'll give you a good example of this. I bought a dog uh, by the name of Maury. And some of you remember Maury. I've done a lot of posting on him. And I did a great job with him. And I ended up selling him to a gentleman in Texas as an executive protection dog at about two and a half, three years of age. And that's really what I try to do. I try to produce product and sell the dogs when they're done at an older age. And they're basically green dogs ready to go to that next level. Okay. And it's just what I love to do. So, uh... Maury, the, the breeder, when I went to go approach her, and she was uh, a breeder in, in New Mexico that has um, police dogs stock out of uh, Czechoslovakia. A lot of her dogs are Czech dogs. And they, they have a long history of nose work behind them because they do a lot of scent detection and police work, right? So um, she wouldn't let me have the puppy until it was 16 weeks. And I didn't understand why, and now I'm getting the idea. I understand. These dogs are very tightly wound at a very young age, and if you don't have the skill to be able to get this animal through it, you're going to have a dog that winds out on you, and that's what happened with Aurora. Aurora was a great little puppy. She was one of the best dogs in the litter. I had high hopes for her, and it's, it's, there's a lot of factors that go on and how to handle it, and you've got to be able to read, and you've got to be able to flex. It's not always doing the same exact thing with every dog. Every dog is different, and that's that instant, that gut feeling of a dog trainer that I'm telling you about. It's a dog man, you know, it's, or a woman, you know, it's somebody that has a very keen sense of uh, understanding dog psychology and getting these animals through it. They're not a beginner dog. And I've said it again and again. You guys got to understand that. These dogs are for people that really understand dog psychology. And there's always little talk. You hear people all the time talking about, ah, oh, these guys are real reactive. They're squirrels. They're this, that. And it's most of the time it's people that don't understand how to deal with these dogs that are so tightly wound. Right? It's an art, guys. It really is. It's like painting a picture and, and, and getting a lot of skill and, and how well you can do that. Mixing your colors, etc., using the right brushes, whatever it may be. But 
that analogy goes over to the dog training. It's a feel. It's a, it's a gut feeling. It's something that I have a natural God-given talent. I've got these dogs because they're a challenge. They're a challenge to me, okay? So you know that the public's going to be that way. So it's, it's hard because I want to, to do what I love to do and, and to play with these animals, but I want my bloodlines. I want to build my bloodlines. I want to be proud of it. And when you do that and then 90% of the people don't have the ability to handle these dogs, it's tough, you know? Uh, other people would probably say, don't breed the dogs. You don't have a market for them. Don't breed them. What are you doing? Well, reality is that there is a very pretty good market for it. Um, and I just don't like to see the dogs get uh, go sideways and then end up being a bad situation. Uh, so we had one that was a little reactive. And then we've got one with an owner that just didn't know how to set proper boundaries and relationship with his animal and started to have aggression problems, okay? He's working on that now. He's telling me that he's doing pretty good with it, and he's got a top trainer in L.A. that's going to help him through this problem along with me. If, I can, if he needs my feedback or help, I'm more than happy to help him. But in a general sense, that's relationship, right? It's a relationship between him and the dog, and, and he has to be able to set those boundaries and do the right thing to get the dog through it so the dog knows better than to broach those areas. I don't have those problems at all because right away I'm constantly thinking. I'm constantly analyzing when I'm seeing the dog go through development. If I see any body language, even then, I don't. I just I kind of throw it out. I put my hand out there. I do routines and patterns that are going to address that situation. And I do it at the right time period within their development so that the dog understands that then I am the, the pack wolf and I'm alpha wolf in that regards. And in this regards, these breeds... Are, um, they are bred to do a job, guys. They're not a couch potato. They're not a pet. Um, that being the case, it, again, it takes a skill level that uh, most people don't have. So uh, we'll keep doing what I do, and I'll keep trying to educate people and then trying to make sure I do the best I can by the puppies and getting them in the right hands that things aren't going to happen, you know. And it's, it's tough sometimes, you know. And I'm learning as I go, you know, this is, what is it, third litter now? And I'm basically learning and growing as a breeder, you know, I haven't done this before, and it's something that you're dealing with the public, you know, the, the dogs is one issue, that's, that's, that's only one, but the public is a whole different thing. Their, their ability, their lack of abilities, um, their skill level, uh, that all makes a difference with dogs like I'm dealing with, right? These are working dogs, guys. All right, I'll let you guys go. Have a good vacation. There's still the New Year's to come. We're getting closer every day, and we're having a good time up here in the high desert. Very cold. I should have worn my gloves, and my hands are freezing right now. It's starting to turn into a sloshy mess already. See, it, it'll melt today pretty quick. It becomes a big old water mess. But there's not much on the ground out there, so that's a good thing. All right, Mark Fresh, Protect Dog Training. I'll let you guys go. Have a good day.